In this video, we're going to take a look at the Rio Link Duo, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on what exactly this camera brings to your smart home. And of course, we're going to be talking Home Assistant integration. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. I'm just going to jump to the big reveal here. I absolutely love this Rio Link Duo camera. And it has zero to do with Rio Link sending this camera at no cost to me so I could do this video. But if you've watched my other videos, you probably already know that. But just in case you don't, Rio Link had zero influence over this video, and they haven't even seen it prior to it being published on YouTube. So what follows is 100% my own opinion. I'm sure by now you've seen this camera in your YouTube feed. Its dual lens design makes it stand out. And those dual lenses allow it to get an ultra wide field of view without any of the typical distortion you normally see around the edges of an ultra wide view. And while there are other security cameras out there with a wider field of view than 150 degrees, this is one of Rio Link's widest. But if you're like me, those numbers don't mean much. So let's get visual. Here is the Rio Link 510A I have mounted over my garage. The camera mounted here is meant to watch the cars that are typically parked in front of the garage. And as you can see, with the 80 degree field of view, I can't get both cars in the image. So I swapped it out with the Rio Link Duo. Holy crap, right? Not only do I get the entire driveway on both sides of our garage, I can see a sliver of the street. And for reference here, the distance from these trees all the way out to that street that you see is about 100 feet. Even the Arlo Pro 2 I had mounted in this location prior to the 510A couldn't match that field of view. But I suspect most people are going to have strong feelings about the appearance of this camera. This is not a small device that you can easily hide under your eaves. People are going to notice it. And then there's the cabling. Unlike the 510A, the cabling isn't hidden in the mounting arm, which means you're probably going to have some exposed cabling, but it does come with a nice benefit. You can bring your own wall mount for this camera, which is good because I suspect some of you are going to have a problem with this included mount. First, the mount is plastic. And second, the movement of the mount is limited. I've also heard some people say the lack of a ball joint is a problem, but I suspect this mount will get the job done for the majority of use cases out there. Another benefit of this mount is that it comes in two pieces, which makes mounting this camera to a wall super easy. My issue with most wall mounted cameras, at least the bullet style that I've typically played with, is that the wall mount is attached to the camera. And the size of the camera can make getting your tools in there to mount this to the wall difficult. Very possible that's a me problem. But in any case, this mount makes that a non-issue. Like the other Reolink cameras I've played with, getting this set up in the Reolink app is pretty easy. And for anyone who set up a security camera recently, the pattern is pretty typical. Just scan the QR code on the camera, Enter your Wi-Fi credentials and the app does the rest. And once the camera is in the Rio Link app, you can view the image as one single image with only a little weirdness in the middle of the image where those two images from the two different lenses meet. I did notice some color differences between the two lenses, which I thought was pretty weird. Nothing major that would make this camera unusable, and I suspect some people aren't going to notice. But of course, now that I've mentioned it, you probably will notice it. This camera also has a siren that could go off when it detects motion. Although, honestly, I think that's going to annoy my neighbors more than it's going to deter anyone, so I haven't really tested it. And you get two-way audio, although I currently have this camera mounted 12 feet above the ground, so I don't think the two-way audio is going to work all that well. But I will say that even with this camera mounted in its current location, the microphone can pick up the conversation on the driveway pretty well. In fact, as I was scrolling through the captured video on the camera looking for video clips I could use for this video, I found that the microphone had picked up the audiobook my wife was listening to in her car before she pulled out of the driveway for work one day, which I thought was pretty impressive considering her windows were up. Or it means that the volume she was using in the car was way too loud. Either way, mounting this camera closer to the ground than I have it mounted would make the two-way audio much more usable. But mounting this camera closer to the ground for my particular use case might cause some other issues with that field of view. And since we're speaking of issues, I tested the power over ethernet version of this camera, and interestingly enough, you only have two video storage options, the SD card or an FTP site. Does anyone still use an FTP site to store video? 
Anyway, that means that there's no cloud storage option for the power over ethernet version of this camera. Although Reolink's FAQ mentions that there's a solution for that coming soon. The two wireless versions of this camera do support the Reolink cloud storage. I'm by far no video expert, but I find it weird that the power over ethernet version doesn't support cloud storage, but the wireless versions do. In any case, if you need cloud storage, then you're probably going to want to look at one of the Wi-Fi options. And the other potential issue I can see with this camera is the viewing angle. Yeah, I know, I said the viewing angle was probably one of the best things about this camera. But while the image you get from this camera is 150 degrees wide, the vertical field of view is only 44 degrees. If you've used Reolink before, you've already know what to expect. But I think it means that you're going to want to take a little more time and plan where you want to mount this camera. The viewing angle and the included mount aren't going to allow you to just throw this camera up on the wall and then adjust it later to get the image you want. If I had just 10 more degrees on the vertical angle, I think this camera would be perfect for my use case. As is, in my use case, I would either need to mount this camera higher or I would need to mount it lower where potentially people could mess with it. Okay, so now that you have a sense of the camera, let's talk smart home integration. If you plan on integrating this camera with another smart home service, I suggest creating an additional user specific for that integration. That way you could reset passwords or disable that account altogether if there was a problem. Since I was planning on adding this to Home Assistant, I did just that. Then once I had my second account, I jumped into Home Assistant to start setting up the integration. But in smart home, at least in this smart home, sometimes things don't go as planned. Nothing I did could get this Reolink Duo to work with the Hax Reolink integration I've used before. Although I've seen other people get the Duo working with that integration. As of right now, I'm not sure what the issue is, but based on the fact that I've seen other people getting it working, I suspect the issue is a me problem and not a hardware issue. The OnViv integration did work for me, as did the RTSP one. The downside to these last two is that you don't have any access to the motion sensors. But I need to do a new video on how to automate the boring stuff using Reolink cameras, so I'll revisit the hacks integration with the Reolink Duo once this camera is officially out. For now, I'll just use the OnViv integration. To set up OnViv, simply head over to Configuration and click Integrations. From here, choose OnViv, then enter the IP. Make sure you change the port to 8000, and use your new login that you created in the app. After that, I added my cameras to my Lovelace dashboard, so I could look at them whenever I opened the dashboard. If you saw my video on the Reolink 510A, you'll know that I like to use dudes for person detection. And as soon as I have access to this camera's motion sensors in Home Assistant, I'll probably go back to that solution. For now, I'm using the Reolink AI to detect people and vehicles. The Reolink AI seems to perform well with the default settings. And the vehicle detection, as far as I can tell, is much improved from my last test. In fact, it's labeled as vehicle motion, and it appears to only trigger when it senses a vehicle actually in motion, as opposed to just detecting any vehicle in the frame. Which means this is much more usable when you've pointed this camera at a driveway where you might have cars parked instead of just moving. And so far, it seems pretty reliable. I mean, nothing's 100%, but I haven't had very many false positives with either the person or the vehicle motion detection on this camera. So let's talk about how you can get one of these cameras. The cameras have been out for pre-order for a couple of weeks now, with a target of shipping in late November. And between filming this video and editing this video, the cameras sold out, or at least are currently listed as out of stock. If I get word on when they may be back in stock, I'll post it in the description. For now, if you're interested in these cameras, keep watching Reolink's page. There are four versions of this camera. The power over ethernet one, like the one I tested, is listed at $119. There's a Wi-Fi version that requires a power outlet for $129. The Wi-Fi battery powered one is $169. And the 4G battery powered one is $309. In the box, you get the Reolink Duo with its dual lenses and 2K resolution and 150 degree field of view. The mounting hardware and a handy screwdriver for mounting the camera. As I mentioned, the Wi-Fi versions are cloud storage enabled and all four can take an SD card to store video locally. These cameras have a siren, two-way audio, and a spotlight that comes on when motion is detected for color night vision. And of course, you get Reolink's built-in AI person and vehicle motion detection. All in all, I think this is a great camera for the price. I'll include a link in the video description where you can pick one of these up. 
Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about the dual lens design. Are we going to see more of this on security cameras or are they going to stick with the single lens? If you got value from this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.